Okay, I'll mention that these are problems that are basically taken from a, a, a test that I have lying around. Okay, and one of the tests generated uh, for the final. Um, so these are very typical situations that might well occur in the final. They're very typical situations that will occur in linear algebra. Um, <coughs> so, we have the question here, uh, does this set of four vectors span P3? Now, we, I haven't written down what the vectors are. It could be any four vectors in P3. So we have to determine whether they span P3. Now, to answer such a question, uh, first of all, uh, write down the typical element or the typical member of the space. Well, the space is P3. Typical member uh, would be a vector W consisting of a general third degree polynomial. So I'll call that A1x cubed plus A2x squared plus A3x plus A4. Okay, this is a typical member of P3. Then, write the equation stating that a linear combination of V1 through V4 is equal to W. Okay, well, so I'll write C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C3 V3 plus C4 V4 equals W. Okay, in this case, that would be A1x cubed plus A2x squared plus A3x plus A4. Then substitute your V1 through V4 and see what you have. And what you have will be a system of equations. You get a system of linear equations in C1, C2, C3, C4. You get four equations. Four unknowns. And if the equations can be solved, to give you values of C1, C2, C3, C4 in terms of A1, A2, A3, and A4, then this set does span and would incidentally be a basis because uh, this space has dimension 4. Um, and of course you could be asked to prove that P3 has dimension 4. Okay, you could prove that by again writing down your typical member of P3 and then coming up with a standard basis and proving uh, that that is a basis, that it is linearly independent, that it spans, that it could be, uh, that, that a combination of those vectors could be uh, any, please, any, any degree three polynomial. It could be equal to your general degree three polynomial. Okay, well, that works fine for P3. Uh, what if this was some other space? Okay. Uh, what about A1, 
m22. Well then, your typical vector nm22 would not be a polynomial, would it? So you would have to write some other vector, okay? Uh, and that could be a1, a2, a3, a4, if you wish, or a, b, c, d, or a11, a12, a21, a22, whatever way you want to write it. You just write down arbitrary symbols for the four members of that matrix, and then you do the same thing. And of course, your V1, V2, V3, V4 had better be two by two matrices in that case. Just as in the case of P3, these had better be polynomials of degree three. Now they can have lesser degrees than three, but degrees that don't exceed three. <coughs> so that's a general way of doing it. And if you do this with the matrices, it's going to come out exactly the same, except that now we're not going to have the a. 1x squared and so forth. This would then be a1, a2, a3, a4. And of course now the v1, v2, v3, v4 wouldn't be polynomials, they would be 2 by 2 matrices. And when you write out this equation and look at it, you'll see that it gives you again four equations in the four unknown c1, c2, c3, c4. And then your unfamiliar territory. You can solve those equations by writing a matrix equation. You can solve them by doing an augmented matrix and reduce it. You can solve them just by straightforward elimination.